it's maybe a little unfortunate that we have to do this lesson remotely. Uh, if we had been in class, we would have played a little game. It's called graph that function. So I'm going to try to still help you to experience the same idea, but you need, you need to do something for yourself. You're going to need to stop, pause the video at various times and think. If you don't do that, you just kind of play the video through. Um, you do miss out on the opportunity to think, figure out if you're uh, thinking correctly or maybe need to change the way you're thinking. I don't want you to figure that out when you're taking a quiz. So um, here's the idea. I'm going to give you the graph of a derivative. And these are purposely kind of like intro graphs. And normally in class, uh, you guys would have tried to figure out the original function. It would have taken some time. You would have thought about it. Um, and uh, there would have been some good thinking going on. You're trying to graph the original function. Ready? Here's the graph of some of a derivative. Could you come up with that function? Could you come up with the original function? What do you think? What would you do? Push pause. Think about what we learned yesterday and see if you can draw the original function. Now, normally what students would start to do, and maybe you did because you thought about this on your own, is they would interpret the values of this function, just like we did yesterday, the values of this derivative, that is, to be negative. Likewise, some negative values over here. So uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that we have a negative slope on the original function. Yes, these would be positive values, which correspond to positive slopes. What does that mean? Well, it means that we, our original function is, is uh, going up. Can you picture this function? Can you picture a function that it's first in the red, that means it's going down? Can you picture a function where at this critical point, that's what that would be, right? This critical point, I think it's at negative five that it switches to positive slope. And then, well, at another critical point, it switches to be negative slope. And so we're using these x-intercepts kind of carefully as also to be part of our sketch. So what's it look like? It goes down, right? It goes down with those first negative slopes. It goes down until we get to an x value of negative five. And then the graph starts to go up. It goes up until we get to the x value of negative 1. And then it goes down again. Yes, it goes down until we get all the way over to an x value of 6. And then, well, one last time, it goes up. Now, the graph that I drew would be the, it would be the, it would display the behavior of some original function. In other words, the slope behavior. And uh, we can see that the critical points, um, become, of course, the extrema, the maximums and minimums. Are you getting the idea? Well, same thing. See if you can graph the original function. See if you can come up with the behavior just by looking at the slopes. Again, another good time to pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. You can do a similar idea. You can think about these values. These values would be the slope. They would, of course, be the negative and positive slope of the original function. Um, how about this critical point right here? This critical point, can you tell already if it's a maximum or minimum? And then how about this negative 3? This negative 3 looks like it's actually an endpoint. So maybe it's like a place that I can start my graph. And I can start my graph by going down, by going down because I have negative slopes all the way until the x value of 1. And then we can make our graph go up. Now the graph's going to go up um, because of those positive slopes. So how'd you do? Looks like we also can conclude that we have a minimum here. 
again, based on those changing slopes. Now, today's lesson is all about drawing original functions by interpreting uh, the graph of a derivative. And when we interpret the graph of a derivative, we want to remember that the values of that graph represent the positive and negative slopes of the original function. And then again, those x-intercepts, well, they become those critical points. Are you ready? We're going to do a couple more. These uh, I'll sort of continue to walk you through, and um, we'll see if, uh, if you're getting the idea. I like this one because it's actually so simple, it can sometimes be confusing. Um, we have basically a derivative that's a straight line. Now, we want to be careful that you don't look at this and say that it, has, it always has negative slopes. Um, it's definitely true that it sometimes has a negative slope. Uh, that would, of course, be these negative values. But uh, it actually has positive slope because, well, it has positive values. So what kind of graph are we talking about here? We're talking about a graph that goes up and then goes back down. A graph that goes up and then it goes back down. And notice that the change is occurring at point C. It turns out that it's actually just an upside down parabola. Now, I want you to see something here. I want you to see that uh, an upside down parabola would have to be a negative x squared. That, of course, would be the generic, uh, the sort of the parent function of that uh, original uh, equation. But that would mean that the derivative would have to be some type of negative 2x. Well, that's exactly what I have here. I have a graph that rep looks like something like negative 2x. You know, it looks like it's going down. So I'm just helping you see that the exponents can help us to make some of the same connections. Um, the other thing is when you do these problems, I'm actually going to ask you to make the same conclusions. I'm going to ask you to say if there's a max or min. It's obviously pretty clear there's a maximum of c and that there's no minimum. And I also want you to talk about increasing, decreasing. But we kind of already figured that out because we know it's increasing to the left of C. That's because the slope is positive and the graph is going up. And then, of course, it's decreasing to the right of C as the slope is negative and it's going down. So we, we make this same box of conclusions, even though uh, we're just starting out uh, with the graph of a derivative. Ready to try another one? How about this derivative graph? And I'm going to label some points here uh, as A, B, and C. I'd like to suggest that um, this number line idea that we're using for our main lesson, we can certainly use in, in this lesson. Uh, because really, when you look at this graph and you say that there's positive values right here, that's just going to be the positive that goes on your number line to the left of that critical point of A. And, uh, you know, when you look at your other critical point here, the other x-intercept, and you say the same thing, you say that there's positive values, that's just, again, going to be a plus sign on our same number line. Now, that means that everything in between here would have to be represented by negative values. And uh, it kind of helps you see that point C actually is not um, a critical point. It was just kind of there as a teaser to make sure that, uh, that you're not overusing it because it looks like the slopes are negative the whole way between A and B. So what kind of graph do we have here? Well, we have a graph that goes up until I get to point A, and then it goes down until I get to point B, and then, well, it's going to go back up. So, right, so whether we make a number line or whether we just kind of look at the derivative, we're going to end up with this type of graph. And again, if you look at the exponents with me, you can see that the, um, uh, the, the function I drew here, well, I'll tell you what, if you look at the derivative with exponents, you can tell that uh, it would have to be x squared. Um, that's because, of course, it's just a parabola. So what about my original function? Well, it would have to be one power higher, right? So that means it would be some type of x cubed, which we did draw here. 
we drew an x cubed that goes up and down and then back up. All right. Hey, uh, one more of these derivative graphs. And uh, again, same thing. Are you thinking about this on your own? Are you trying this on your own? Especially this one. Good time to push pause. See if you can draw the original function. Hmm. A little different here, isn't it? It looks like that uh, the original, uh, it looks like that the slopes are positive and then positive some more. Hmm. What kind of function has slopes that are always positive? Now, there is one place where the slope is technically equal to zero, but still, it's like the graph has positive slope and then continues to have positive slope. Well, yeah, that's right. It's the same function that we drew yesterday at the end of the lesson, a function that goes up and then goes up some more. And really, there's just this one point right here, point A, where we say that the slope is zero. Uh, just that one moment in time, we end up with a flat line, but it's still, it's just really at that point A. And what did we really just draw here? Well, we drew an x cubed. It's just a different version of an x cubed. And so our derivative would have had to have been some type of x squared. All right. Hey, one more type of problem. And um, it's my lottery ticket problem. We're going to do a little scratch off here. But what it really is, is uh, some numeric values. Now, you're going to see one of these in the assignment. And if you're given numeric values, you want to be able to uh, interpret them. And so let's, let's go to it. Let's uh, scratch off and see what we have. Um, I'm going to scratch off the first one. Let's see if we're a winner. Ah, yes, we're the winner of a point, the point 2, 4. Now, if somebody tells you that f of 2 equals 4, then they've given you a point on the graph. So maybe that's a point that we can start at. Maybe that's just like a point somewhere along the way. But it's a point. Now, I like these uh, yellow numbers because they're equal to 0. And I feel like when a derivative is equal to zero, it's a critical point. And critical points are perfect for number lines. Um, I'd like to use that number line concept again on this problem. I'm going to put negative one and two on a number line. Again, because, well, because the slope is equal to zero. So that means it's a critical point. What else do we have? We have, uh, we have this green, number one. Now, when it says that the derivative is equal to 1, what that really means is we have a positive slope. And so since the number 1, check that, since the number 0 is between negative 1 and 2, and I got a positive value, that means that everything in between there is going to be positive. So I bet you know what the last one is. That's right, negative slope. But again, really... When I see negative 3 equaling the derivative at negative 3 equaling negative 2, that means that everything's going to be negative in that interval. And it's the same thing over here when I have the number 4, but I have that negative value. That means all the slopes are going to be negative. Now, you got to be careful when you're making one of these number lines that you don't lose track of the critical points. And the critical points sometimes can get lost in all of the numbers on the number line. So I'm saying that because we want to make sure that uh, that 2 is something that ends up on our graph and uh, negative 1 also ends up on the graph. Basically, we want to make sure that that's a place where the slope changes. So it changes how? Well, it's going to be a negative slope until it gets to negative 1. And then, of course, it's going to be a positive slope all the way to 2. And then it's going to be a negative slope the rest of the way. It's a numeric problem. It's just interpreting the same slope ideas. And just in case you're wondering, the graph that I drew, uh, we don't know for sure if that's the exact height, if that's the exact y value of the graph. The only y value that we actually have was the first one at 2, 4. So after that, I don't know for sure if the graph uh, gets any higher or lower. I just drew it so that we could see the changing slopes. All right. So well, that wraps up lesson 4.2. And now it's time for you. It's time for you to work on that assignment.